Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Blaze Factorio Space Exploration. The last run has been, um, there's been a bit of sort of consolidating and generally sort of beefing up the, uh, the Naquium supplies. So in the last episode I talked about this new ship I built here that's flying out to Realm of Shadows at the moment. And this is my um, new improved long range Naquium transport ship that now has the uh, the six warehouses in it instead of, instead of the old one that had um, three I think. And we're also loading in the crushed Naquatite as well, which means we can fit a lot more into the ship. Four times as much of the raw material into the ship. And so, that was working fine, but I thought, I'm going to be needing this a bit faster than I reckon one ship can provide it. So, I've actually made a second one of those ships, which is parked here at the moment, gradually filling up. And now, the, um, the rate... The rate it's being filled up at is currently insufficient, and there appears to be too much sulphur in here, but there's still... Yeah, a lot of sulphur in this spaceship. So I'm going to need to do a bit of a bit of tweaking of the numbers here because I think my estimates on how much sulphur 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 is required for sulfuric acid is a bit out because this warehouse is now completely full and this ship hasn't unloaded yet. That said, it hasn't become a problem yet because the ship is still loading. As you can see, these are only um, well, this one is has barely started filling up. This one is about half full. This one is about a, a quarter full. So it's quite possible that we will actually manage to unload the rest of the sulphur before it, before the ship is ready to leave. So I'm I'm cautiously optimistic there, um, but we'll see. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see how it goes. I don't want it to jam up. But as you saw from when I was looking just now, the other one of these ships is practically here. So this rate of mining is not sufficient. This rate of mining and crushing and everything is not sufficient. And as you can see up here, we've got this system running at about well, it's only using one out of five of the um, mechanical facilities. So this is definitely too slow. So my plan for this is to go out and do some extra mining over here with this Naquatite and probably some of these Naquatite patches over here. So I'm going to need to come back out to Realm of Shadows and put in a railway system here in order to transport all of this stuff around and keep everything ticking over nicely. So that's going to be a fairly big job, but I don't see, I don't see it's going to be particularly complicated just as long as I remember to go out there with all the stuff that I need. So that's ticking over okay. Back in Norvis orbit... I've made a few little changes here as well. I've um, So the big ships land here, and then the small ones that land here that take the Naquim on to a tulip to be, to be actually processed. And as you can see here, we've got a decent amount actually stored in these warehouses. I've, but I've moved I've moved them across a bit and, and, and moved all of this across a bit. And so that's given me the space to make another couple of changes. The first and most important one, probably, is that I've now put in these uh, balancers here and here to make sure that the same amount of, of the uh, nac crushed Naquatite that's coming off the ship goes into each one of these warehouses, and then that these three are unloaded at the same rate into the two in here, just to make sure everything carries on flowing smoothly and neatly, and I don't have any sort of any bottlenecks or backups or uneven loading that could cause the ship to just sit here for longer than it should. With that space, I've also put in these tanks here to allow me to refuel the ship a bit more quickly. It's still not ideal because we've just got one pump loading it in, but it's a lot better, and this means we've got enough fuel here buffered to load the ship up when it when it arrives. At the other end of that, the next step is over here on Tulip, where the there and neck again again is stopped in orbit. So as you can see, we've got the um, these are the ships I built up last time and talked about quite a bit. We've got two warehouses full of the um, crushed Naquatite on this ship, so that's stored very that's that's working as it should. But if I look down on Tulip, we can see that this actually isn't flowing through as quickly as I would like it to. We're um, we're running into basically processing rate problems, and I'm not. Oh right, yes. So what I've what I've done in order to sort of to try and fix this is I've built this facility up here that is going to the um, but it have, unfortunately I didn't have all the parts for it, so it's only partly finished. Um, but the idea is that this is going to double the rate I can um, I can process the naqui the crushed naqui I'm at. Um, the limiting factor on this is probably going to be the rate I can make these um, uh, vitalic acid. Uh, capsules. However, now that I've got a good supply of glass, I'm optimistic that this is going to just run fast enough. My biggest concern, I have to admit, is that this half belt isn't going to be sufficient and I'm going to need to bring up more, more than that. But that's something I'll look at later if I, if I need to. In the meantime, um, I've got the other ship. I think it, it must be, yes, it must be the, the other ship. Let's have a quick look. Yes, this one has this, uh, has this 
yellow box here that has all the bits in it that will be needed to finish off that um, that that system down there on on Tulip and get everything running full speed flat out. Although there seem to be some belts missing, actually. I thought it, I thought I put some belts in there. Maybe I didn't. I'll have to have another look at that at some point in the next stream and, and just make sure everything starts working properly. And so that once all of this starts working nicely, that should finally give me the um, all of the naquium I need in order to get the deep space science one running flat out full speed ahead in fact at the moment it is all of this is now backed up yeah this is this is running great this is these these, these machines are all running um all of these card types are backed up that's excellent and up here <laughs> yes the science packs are being made as fast as this this bottleneck here will let them so i need to come over here put in the um a faster machine here like I've been talking about quite a lot uh, I just haven't got around to it yet because there have been other more pressing problems and then this is just gradually creating the uh, the deep space science packs that are being passed down here into the into the science system and in they must be around here somewhere yeah they're coming in along here but they're getting used up as fast as they're being made because as you can see up here I am doing science at the moment I'm trying to develop the the science required to do the next science so it's a bit of a sort of a a loop in a loop in there if, if you like the other big thing I did so down if, if we have a look at Norvis now I've been having problems on Norvis specifically with the uranium production so over here the uh, as you can see the station is completely empty there's no uranium available there's nothing down here we've, we've got generally we've got shortages and I'm using quite a lot of uranium at the moment quite a lot of it's being shipped up by this train system over to the rockets to go up into orbit and some of it is being turned into uranium fuel cells uh, somewhere that are also being taken up into orbit and those are needed for one of the sciences I forget exactly which one oh, there's oh, there's a, a problem fix that I don't think the bots well maybe the bots will be able to do this we shall see um, but the idea is that this yeah so, so in order to sort that out I had a couple of choices I could either find more uranium on on Norvis which is tricky I mean there, there are patches but they're sort of ones like this one it's way out it's surrounded by loads of biters and uh, same with this one this, this is a fair amount out there but it would require going out on another sort of big biter expansion push and I I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying not to do that if I can avoid it because it's it's, it's a faff and a hassle, and I I just can't be bothered to be honest with you. So I haven't done that. What I've done instead, as you probably noticed here, this is a spaceship docking area where the spaceship where a spaceship comes in, it unloads um, a large quantity of um, of uranium ore here, which then gets fed in round the back way and into the system where it can be processed in exactly the same way that it was that, that, that uranium was processed before. And that is all coming from the asteroid belt, Khalid's asteroid belt one here, where we found this decently chunky patch here of um, uranium, five million, about five million uranium plus another thirty-seven thousand over there. So we're digging this up, and I've, I've filled this area up with lots of the uh, productivity modules in order to try and get a bit more uranium out than I otherwise would. Um, the solar here to keep that running, and much like I have with the um, the other one, the um, what do you call it? Uh, the naquium mining we're bringing out sulfur and iron in order to make the acid here and then um, in order to ship uh, to, to, to this required to do the mining in order to then bring it back again however i'm having a little bit of difficulty with the numbers here because it's a little bit complicated because i've got um plus 90 percent mining productivity from the research i've done i've got another um 100 productivity from the modules i've put in over here so this is all it's all a lot more it's, it's a lot of it's producing about I mean presumably is that going to be producing three times as much or is it going to be producing four times as much I actually don't know um, for each but but it's going to be producing significantly more for each acid used and that means that we aren't using up the uranium the sulfur and the iron as fast as I was really expecting us to and that means that this doesn't get emptied as quickly as it should so we're running into a problem here where we just can't load the warehouse up Although there was, yeah, there's an empty space there. I don't know why that one hasn't been filled. But there's a problem here um, where there's too much sulfur, too much iron. Is it just too, um, mostly too much sulfur, to be honest. So I think I need to reduce these numbers and just tell the ship to take off when it's got less. And you were seeing the same problem out with the Naquium as well. So, yeah, this isn't, isn't good enough. But at the moment, I'm sort of cautiously optimistic. Uh, 
I don't know. It's probably not going to work, and I'm going to have to make the ship leave manually, and then load it up with a lot less sulfur. We, we, we shall see how it goes. Um, but I'll let this this warehouse fill up, and then and then see from there. Um, so that's something I'm definitely going to have to take a look at. But once this gets working well, again, I should now have a good supply of uranium being brought through to um, to Norvis. So we won't. So we, fingers crossed, won't run out. But we'll see how that goes, as ever. Finally, in the last video, I talked a little bit about um, about changing some of the wiring around on these ships to try and make it a little bit more effective. And so what I've done here is you can see there's now green and red wires going around in the ship. And the idea is that the red wires are carrying the sort of the the data signals that will go into all of this system and then be passed up to here. Whereas the green wires are carrying things like, the, are mostly carrying just the gate signals at the moment. So we don't pass signals that we don't want to be passing through into here. And I'm cautiously optimistic that that will help with the train cutting in half issue. Um, although that, to be honest, that remain, it remains to be seen how that goes. We'll, um, it, it's been a problem and it's a really hard one to, to um, to debug and just to find out why it's happening and to fix it so um and especially as it doesn't happen all the time so it's a tricky one but i'm cautiously optimistic that the few ships i've upgraded to have this multicolored wiring will now be okay but only time will tell <laughs> so that's basically what i've done since the last video um there hasn't been a huge amount of it because Modifying the uh, Naquium production and then setting up the Uranium production were both quite time consuming. So I haven't done an enormous amount other than those two. Um, however, there's been um, a couple of things I've noticed that I need to do in the future. One of those is the the, the big ships that go all the way out to um, to Realm of Shadows to ca carrying the, the Naquium. Um, they need a few more lasers around the front of them because the shields are picking up quite a lot of damage as they fly across. Now, it's not enough to have to, that anything's penetrated yet, but I think it'd be a good idea just to stick a couple of extra ones in. I mean, probably like that might well be enough. And I've got some further down as well to catch anything that's coming in sideways. Uh, maybe one there and well, there isn't room for one on the other side. But you see what I mean? Just stick it, squeezing a few extra ones in where there's room to. Let's have a look at the other ship. Which one are you? You're the Mark II. Um, the two by two is now parked in in deep space because it got it's got there and it's now waiting to be unloaded. So let's 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 put some extra lasers in here, and then when when the ship gets back to Norvis orbit, these will all automatically be placed, and hopefully that'll then be enough to protect the ship, um, protect the shields a little bit better. And I'm not sure it is going to be enough actually because these lasers don't really extend very much above the shields. Um, however, it, it, it will make if, if the shields do collapse, it will protect the walls and the, the hull of the ship against anything that comes in. Maybe I should extend this a little bit further and put, put another row of them, another row of lasers in right at the top, because that again would still be well inside the shields, so they'll probably be all right. Yes, I think in yes, in hindsight, there should be the shields don't need to be right at the edge like this. You can have a row of lasers outside the shields to actually protect the shields as well. So we'll do that next time we build a ship. Also down on Norvis, there's been um, quite a lot of damage has happened to this outpost here, and it's run out of um, construction bots as well to go out and do the do the repairing, as you can see from these uh, robo ports. Um, I think that's because there were little, little attacks were coming through, and so they were all getting defended against. But that was getting through sort of bits of ammunition, some of the some of the uh, some of the uh, uranium ammo, some of the oil. We're getting through little bits of ammunition, and so eventually another train was called out to restock that. Now, I decided a while back that it would be a good idea to tack a, um, an artillery train on the back of that, um, on the back of here, in order to um, basically to push, because the theory is that if any biters are attacking the base, then that means there are clearly biters too close to the walls there, so sending the artillery train out there to sort them out can only be a good idea. That, of course, caused... But however, the artillery train came out here. The artillery train has now got a longer range than it had before. So it pushed it pushed the um, the boundaries out a little bit further. And that, I think, caused some more biter attacks. And that caused extra stress and strain on the defences. And I think some of them must have come through and gnawed on it a little bit. And the bots went out to repair it. And the bots got destroyed by the biters. So probably what I should be doing is adding in an extra one of these that unloads robots and then puts them directly into a roboport. Um... That's going to require a fairly major redesign of the system. Um, it's, it's not impossible. There's 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 easy easily room to, to have more bots being unloaded on the other side here, and then put it and then another robot port to put them in. But it's going to need a mean a fairly major change, and possibly making that change 
well, it's gonna. I'm gonna need somewhere to load load that the um, the train up with those uh, with those robots as well. Um, load them into into here. There's probably probably plenty of room. Yeah, there's loads of room in here. I could put a stack of bots in here as well. But then I need somewhere that loads the bots into the into the train. I need to go around and and then I need to perhaps think about having them unloaded everywhere as well. So it's an extra thing to do. Um, but it's probably a thing that is worth doing just be before this becomes a more serious problem. And as said earlier, I need to process Naquium faster, so that's going to be a fairly big job as well. Um, but we'll, I think I, I know I have some good ideas as what I'm doing there, so it's not. It hopefully won't be too difficult, but we shall see. So, as ever, thank you for watching. That brings you up to date with what I've been doing recently. Um, do come along to the stream on Wednesday after, Wednesday evening if you're interested. Um, that's going to be about three to four hours of me of me play, playing the game, making some progress. I'll go out and fix all the problems I've been talking about, especially the ones involving having too much sulfur in all kinds of ridiculous places, like um, like on this asteroid belt. This is frustrating, and yep, the whole thing is now ground to a halt. So the problem is. Yes, there. So let's send this ship off now. Um, let's send this straight off to Norvis because that's where it's supposed to go next. Uh, Norvis, there we go. And I'll monkey with the numbers later to make sure it doesn't it doesn't overflow everywhere again in the same in the same way. Um, and we'll hopefully hopefully that'll be enough to keep things ticking over nicely there. So that that'll be Wednesday. Monday is the Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttle stream. Um, that again is very worth coming along to, whereas that's me and a group of friends. We're playing through the, the massive, massive mod pack that is Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles. Um, we've, we've discovered a couple of new dimensions recently. We, we had a bit of a ja jaunt off to the nether, um, as you'll have seen in yesterday's video uh, last week. And we've discovered a new sort of, um, some sort of, I don't know, magical forest thing which we're going to go off and explore explore next week so that might be interesting we'll probably all die horribly lots and lots of times so that'll probably be entertaining for you so again do come along and watch that it should be good fun uh, and then i've got some um, i've got at least one real life video that should be coming out early next week and of course the gta ones will be coming out on thursdays so Please don't uh, re remember to uh, subscribe and come along to all those that are seeking reminded of all of the videos come along and enjoy them and i'll see you next time Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.